All right, time to talk about quickly and efficiently navigating through worksheets using control shortcuts. Now, this is another one of our very basic one-star productivity tips, but that doesn't mean it's not valuable and important. In fact, these simple control shortcuts can save you a huge amount of time in the long run. Now, I'm not going to talk through every single shortcut option that Excel has to offer. Instead, I'm going to share with you the ones that I tend to use most frequently. So here are a few of my favorites. We're going to start with control arrow, those up, down, left, right arrows on your keyboard. What those will do is jump to the edge of a contiguous range of cells. That means a range with no blanks in between. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to use command arrow for the shortcut. And at the same time, you could hold shift and not just jump to the last cell, but also create a selection at the same time. So for instance, if you've got a simple range of data like this, got data in cells A1 through D12, and we're selecting cell A2, what we could do is use control arrow right to jump to the last contiguous cell in row two. We could use control down to jump to the last contiguous cell in column A, or we could use home and end tools to jump to the top left or lower right. So control end would take us to that lower right cell, which in this case is D12. Now keep in mind, like most things in Excel, there are many ways to accomplish the same thing. Instead of control end, you could also use control arrow right, followed by arrow down. Now, if we add the shift key in here, instead of control arrow right, something like control shift arrow right won't just jump to cell D2, it will create a selection containing cells A2 through D2. In a similar way, control shift arrow down is going to select the entire contiguous range in column A and control shift end is going to select the entire range of rows and columns. So that would be similar to using something like control A to select all of the values, although in this case we're excluding the headers. Now a couple other quick control tips that I use quite a bit. Uh, control page up and page down help you kind of navigate and scroll between tabs or worksheets. If you're on a Mac, you're going to use option arrow to do that. Um, and then control G launches something called the go to menu, which contains a list of all named cells, ranges, or tables in your worksheet and allows you to jump straight to them. So common use cases here, first selecting large tables or cell ranges without having to do any sort of manual scrolling. And second, identifying the last active cell in a worksheet. Now, this is an important one because what I see a lot of users do is accidentally uh, apply formatting well beyond the range of cells that they actually need. So you may accidentally apply cell fill to an entire column, which extends that fill down to about a million rows. What that's going to do is it's going to bloat your file size unnecessarily. So control end is a great way to kind of see cases where that might be happening. Last but not least here in the lower right, I've got shortcuts to the full list of both window and Mac shortcuts on the Office Support websites. So with that, let's jump to Excel and actually practice using some of these control shortcuts. All right, so here we are, Excel Pro Tips Workbook. I'm on the second blue tab here, Control and Alt Shortcuts. And what we have is a larger sample of movie data. We've got titles in column A, release dates, genres, languages, some metrics like revenue, budget, and profit, extending all the way up to column P here. And then if we scroll down, we've got several thousand rows. Looks like about 3,700 rows. So quite a bit more data, still not huge, but uh, certainly more than the 12 rows that we looked at in our sample. And let's say that we want to grab some of these values and maybe copy them or analyze them elsewhere. Um, what a lot of users will do is select a field or value, like O2 in this case, and start scrolling down like this. And if this looks familiar to you, I want you to stop and think about how we can use control shortcuts here to automate this process and make it much, much more efficient. So what I can do here without changing anything, I've selected down to, looks like row 350. I'm just gonna hold control, hold shift, press arrow down. And that's gonna take me all the way down to the last cell in that column, which is row 3726. So I was able to select all of those values with one click of the button. And then similarly, control arrow up. It's just going to jump me all the way to the top back to row one. Now you've heard me use this expression a few times, this contiguous range. 
And again, that's a range that does not contain any blanks because when you're using these control shift and control shortcut tools, Excel is gonna see a blank as the end of the range that you're looking to select. So to give you an example, let's look at column G here, the rating column, and kind of apply that same shortcut to select all the values in this column. I could press Control, Shift, arrow down, but notice that this time it stops at row 317. And that's because cell G318 is a blank. Looks like Marilyn Hotchkiss's Ballroom Dancing, uh, which I'm personally not familiar with, does not have a rating in the data set. So uh, that control shortcut stopped right here in row 317. So bottom line here is to be careful when you're using these shortcuts so that you know you don't think, okay, I've, I've done the shortcut, I've grabbed all of my rating values, I'm good to go. Because in fact, you've missed about 90% of them due to that blank row. Um, so just be careful when you're using these tools, and make sure that you're grabbing all of the selections that you need. Now, quickly showing you the home and end options, I can select any cell in here, press control and home, that's gonna jump me right top left active cell. Same thing, control end is gonna jump me to P3726, which as you can see, is that lower right corner of my range. Now, this pro tip workbook is a great opportunity to practice the control page up, page down, tab navigation shortcuts. So if I hold control and press page up, it's gonna jump me one tab to the left to custom footer stats. If I press page up again, it's gonna move me to the left again. And then same case with page down, it's gonna take me to the right. So I'm navigating through this workbook very, very quickly, tab by tab, which in this case is going to be very, very helpful since we have dozens and dozens of demos and tabs in this file. Now the final control shortcut that I want to share with you is control G, which is going to pop up this go to menu containing all of those named cells and tables and ranges in the worksheet. And from here, you know, I could say, all right, what, what's this interest rate cell or named range? Just select it, press OK. It's going to jump me straight to that cell. In this case, it's on my scenario manager tab, which is a demo that we'll cover in the analytics section of the course. And it's a cell that we've named interest rate here as part of this mortgage payment calculator. So a very efficient way to navigate directly to that cell. And then one final little bonus tip, if I wanna get all the way back to the beginning here, to the first tab in the worksheet, instead of clicking and holding that arrow in the lower left, I can hold control and click once. That's gonna take me all the way back to my start. So back where I started, control and alt shortcuts. And there you have it, using control shortcuts to efficiently navigate through your workbooks.